Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast number eighty-one. Had to Ooh. check, and uh, and and it is is the holiday season, which means the news kind of sucks right now. Uh, but uh, we're gonna muscle through it. We got the crew here. I am Mike Sorg, of course, out down here in uh, Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. And uh, with me is the very beardy mm. Rob De La Creta. How you doing? Are you not drinking wine? This isn't correct at all. <laughs> no, I'm not drinking wine. Uh, I'm drinking the uh, Line and Kugel's Sunset Wheat, uh, which would not normally be my choice. But I had a visitor who was not really a beer person, so um, I'm drinking this. Uh, I'm doing all right. How, how are you? How are you doing, Mike? Big Good. week. Good week. <laughs> No, no, we're not going to rip off other podcasts. Are you sure? <laughs> sure, it's really the, fun. It, it is, it is, it is. Um, but but uh, then also on the couch we got, oh, let me get him up there, Mr. Chachi Hi. of Chachi Says.net. Hi. There's his title. Hi. Hi. What has been your big addiction for this week? Hi. Uh, I'm playing, um, uh, what's it called? Game, Game Dev Story. It's, uh, well, this past, or ten days ago, Android reached, uh, their ten billionth, or one billionth download for apps. So, to, uh, celebrate this, they did ten days of ten cent apps, where, uh, apps that would normally cost anywhere from five to ten dollars are now ten cents. Mm Mm-hmm. And they did 10 different days of this. And you, being our token Android person. Yeah, so I downloaded like six of them. And this was one. And I can't stop playing it. Awesome. But, I mean, I got I got this. I got Shazam, which is something I meant to download a while ago. Um, which, if you don't know, Shazam is a music identification app. Where if you, if you hear a song and you miss the introduction or it's on a commercial or something... You play, you use Shazam, it'll record the song, it'll search the internet, it'll tell you what the song is. Or if you want to be tech forward in a really annoying way, you'll see the commercials on TV, and it'll play a song, and it'll say like, blah, 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 Shazam this commercial, and then it'll take you to a really dumb website. There you go. Kind of like QR codes. Yeah. Um, uh, Pixel Bad in the chat room reminds us there's two more days of Tencent apps. I love Tencent apps. And only 11 days until Christmas. That is true. So buy your loved one some... So, some yeah, I, I'm apps. stuck. I, I'm addicted to this game. The only thing I haven't accomplished in this game is to have a uh, game of the year. And so I keep playing it to try to get a game of the year. That's all he was doing leading up to uh, the show tonight. Yeah, I'm still doing it. Yeah. No, yeah. look, I'm still doing it. Oh, right there. there you go. And you can't even see it's too late. Any but of that. there you go. Here, why don't you do this one? <laughs> you can kind of see it there. Yeah. There you go. So I keep... Anyways, um, oh, there you are. I just released a game for the play status. Just in case you're- <laughs> yeah, you, he's been telling me the names leading up here while I, I fix all of our tech problems. Um, anyways, uh, this is the awesome cast where uh, we talk about techie things. Where uh, I'm not chachi. There we go. You can contact us at uh, contact at awesomecast.com or 724-25-ACAST, 724-252-2278. And, hey, we're at awesomecast.com. We'd love to hear from you guys. And uh, yeah. and we love to have you guys in the chat room, like uh, Pixel Bat, Silent Ninja's in there, Mad Mike, uh, Riz, I think, was in there for a second. Rob's uh, there. Rob's in there. Hey, Rob. I'm in the chat room. Rob's in the chat room. And, uh, and Juggalo John. And you can join us uh, Tuesdays, 7 p.m., but not the next two weeks. Because we'll be doing something different. Nope, we're off. Nope. Well, well, you guys will get shows, but we won't be here. I will doing not. The shows. I will not be right here. Chachi will be refusing to be anywhere for the next. Hey, uh, <coughs> hey, hey Mike. Hey. I think I'm actually working overtime next week. <laughs> uh, hey Rob. Uh, hey Mike. Hey. Uh, I, I, I'm gonna have a thing for for Friday. Oh yeah. Yeah. That uh that Polish eggnog. Oh, from your yeah. Instagram. Yes, I uh, I don't have a lot of it, so it's going to be shots, but they will be delicious shots. Tremendous, tremendous. For those that don't know, we were doing a uh, we're doing a bit of a uh, uh, a Christmas special. Our very first, first, first. Did we Not talk? our first Christmas did special. We do? What did we do say? last year? We we did we did a uh, 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 picks, I think, last year, right? Yeah, I think we did. We like skipped a week and did picks last last year, but we didn't do. We wanted to do the. The, the the honoring the Jonathan Colton 
um, and uh, and John Hodgman and Leo Laporte twit, in which they all got drunk and talked about hilarious things. Uh, we wanted to do that last year, but well, but we didn't. I think we're going to do that this year. Or someone is going to get touched inappropriately. No matter what, it's worth watching. I probably, picked Rob. Probably all of the above. I picked Rob. What I'm going with. Oh yeah, pick Rob. Rob, yeah. Rob, you're being volunteered. Yeah. I for, for touching or, or yes, being touched? Everything. Everything. All at once. Yep. Huh. Maybe twice. Mm. Wow. There's a thing for that. There is an app called... Hold on, I'm waiting for it to load. Where's My Water? It's what? a game <laughs> by Disney. Swampy the alligator lives under the city and yearns for a more human-like existence. He is especially fond of cleanliness. The other alligators do not take kindly to Swampy's eccentricities, and has conspired to sabotage his water supply. Wow. Whoa. Now that we have riveted our audience, how about this week in, uh, in tech stuff? Your mother. There you go. Uh, <laughs> Rob, I think you had a story there it is. to start off with. Where's my Did water? I have a story to start off with? What's my story? <laughs> Which story we started off? Uh, with... The one we talked about. What story? The one we talked about. I just complained. I didn't talk about anything. Oh, okay. Anything. That's right. Uh, anyways, <laughs> well, let's get started with, hey, Xbox had their uh, da- dashboard update. It finally came out after the show last week. Maybe during the show. I'm not entirely sure. I downloaded it at like 3 in the morning after I was done editing. Um, but, uh, hey, we got Metro on our TV, Rob. Um, uh, Chachi, you 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 have this. It's Rob a, doesn't have this. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm yeah. letting Rob know that we have it on our TV. That you do. I do have it on my TV. You know where my TV is? Where's that? It's in my basement, <laughs> unplugged. <laughs> you just gave up on TV whatsoever. I did. I was like, once I I got basically I got rid of the thing that held my TV up. Mm-hmm. And then, like, once I got rid of that piece of furniture, I was like, well, now I don't have a place to put my TV. Well, honestly, I probably shouldn't spend so much time drooling on my couch. I'll put it in the basement. <laughs> That's why he's so productive. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, Metro interface uh, and uh, you know, new new Netflix apps, new uh, ESPN app. The ESPN app is actually pretty cool because it's kind of like I don't know if you uh, Rob have played with the Sports Center app on uh, on uh, the iPhone where you can you, know, you go in and you plug in all your teams and it kind of just brings you all those updates. Uh, yeah. It's kind of like that with video. Hmm. I have uh, I have NHL Game Center. That's about it. Yeah, and um, it's uh, and my God, if you if you're in NCAA like football or basketball, you're like home with this app. Uh, today, actually, they just released a whole mess of new ones. Uh, YouTube app came out, as well as uh, TMZ came out, and uh, the Verizon FiOS app. So if I still had FiOS TV, I would be uh, testing this out, but I don't. So, um, I, I'm, I, I'm still kind of excited, but I haven't been able to test it out yet since it just downloaded uh, before the show. Uh, but, uh, I've been pretty excited about this kind of like not needing to get, get a Roku box. So, and, and this is something that like how many millions of people already have. That was, uh, <coughs> NHL game center, actually. NHL game center. Yeah, that's what that noise was. The Penguins are going into power play versus the Red Wings. Oh, awesome. <laughs> uh, oh. To address the the, the chat room, mm-hmm. um, Pixel Bat, if that's what that type of microphone is called, then yes, that's what it is. <laughs> hey, yes. Silver Eagle Mike, is he talking about this one back here? I guess so. This guy right here? Yeah. Yes, that, that, was, thing. A, that was a gift from my sister for the, for the studio. Actually, I don't know what it's called. I'm pretty sure it doesn't work. I, it didn't come in a box or anything. I don't think it's... Anyways, uh, he's not talking to you. Um, anyways, so uh, other than that, I, people like Josh, you weren't too thrilled about the, the layout. Joshy, what? <laughs> <laughs> he asked you a question, man. About the Xbox dashboard? No, oh, it's all right. I prefer the old one. You do? Um, the only thing I'm happy about with this is the uh, the apps. Mm-hmm. The new apps are really awesome. Um, Hulu seems a lot better. Yeah, I don't need, I don't need a cable box in my room anymore. Oh, that's right. A, you have Xfinity. Yeah, I have Xfinity, and there's an app for that now. <laughs> so, you know, Comcast doesn't get any more of my money, mm-hmm. and I can access what I already pay for. 
So your Xbox is already paying for itself. Yeah, pretty much. Nice. Yeah, nice. So, um, but yeah, other than that, it's uh, it's the first step for the commonality with uh, Microsoft uh, devices. Um, but uh, but yeah, we'll see how that goes. Uh, speaking of TV, I, I, have you heard? Have you been watching all the web stuff there, uh, uh, Rob? Le web, the web. The only attention to Le web I've seen is the pictures of, of Leo Laporte eating with um, Loic Lemuel. Oh but, yeah. Uh, I, I generally don't pay attention to Le web. Um, it's kind of become a bigger deal. I've been I've been watching a little bit of it this this week, but you can't get away from this. Uh, mid last week, this came out. Eric Schmidt, Google TV will be on the majority of new TVs by summer of 2012. Oh yeah, I did see. I what? saw that thing. That's kind of funny. Which also makes me. Um, Somebody said, somebody, somebody said to me um, that uh, Apple will have a an integrated TV system on the market um, by next spring, I think, was the idea. And uh, the thing that I hadn't really put thought into is, so uh, we've talked a lot about how we really wish we could have apps on the Apple TV. But the reason that that becomes like really difficult to do is because every TV has a different uh, resolution and size and all kinds of other fun things. But if you control that device, so you actually like buy a device that has it built in, like you can do, like you buy a Samsung TV and it has a stupid Netflix proprietary thing built into it. If you could buy an Apple TV with a thing built into it, then it becomes a lot easier to put out content made exactly for that thing. So I wouldn't be surprised if in the next year we start to see uh, like TVs from Google or in a way that it's either that or they're going to basically say, right now every TV that you buy that comes with a stupid proprietary Samsung, Sony, Toshiba, whatever thing will be replaced by a Google TV built into the TV, which is not that huge of a step as much as it is just a giant contract. <laughs> <laughs> sound effects provided by game center um yeah yeah it, it I, but it it really seems like a, a an out there comment for him uh yeah i mean unless for, they're for him to just like drop way. it and yeah. be like just, just like walk in and drop the mic on we're gonna be on all the tvs whether you like it or not yeah yeah which i you know i don't know much about you know what kind of hardware this stuff runs on is this something that like the hardware is already there and a lot of these TVs are already doing Hulu apps and Netflix apps. Uh, that this is just this is just another bunch of bits they get to pack on there. Yeah, I don't think uh, the hardware that you get when you buy a, a Google TV and get ripped off for it um, is not a whole lot. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, like we have, I've been working with some some of the newer Samsung TVs that are only like two thousand dollars a piece, which for like a fifty-five inch TV is not that bad. And they have plenty of computer power, computing power in them to uh, to run something like a Google TV. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually being shown a, uh, a Vizio TV somebody got. Same size. I think it was only a couple hundred dollars more than what I paid uh, for my 42-inch. And uh, it had Hulu. It had Netflix. And he was showing it off to me. It looks great. Uh, it just doesn't seem quite as responsive as it does on, say, my Xbox. But... You got you got to think for video or something like that. An Xbox has has power to spare, so what's just enough for them to do video isn't really going much into the interface, I guess. Or was that just poor design choices, maybe? Hmm. I don't know. It's all crap. It's all crap. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. It's a uh, it's it's another step. Uh, speaking of those apps, Hulu's Face Match helps you ID an actor that you can't name. Uh, mm, about time. What's that? About time. About time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's uh, Facebook has face. Facebook has face recognition. We were just talking about Shazam for music. Shazam. It, it's really only a matter of time before we start running, you know, checksums on uh, on video, so you can identify things. And something I've always talked about, and which is becoming more popular, is the idea of, um, so. Big idea, short story. Uh, the best kind of ad is not an ad. It's not like, you know, the commercial that you see in the middle of a show. But say, like, talk about Levi's. Levi's has option A, make a commercial for Levi's and try and convince you that you should be buying their jeans. Or option B, 
they pay somebody like Hulu to provide something during a show or as footnotes on a show saying, hey, if you liked what actor so-and-so was wearing, here's a list of what he was wearing and here's a link to buy it now. Mm -hmm. And I think things like telling you, uh, providing these little bits of meta information like the names of actors in things that you're watching is like steps into better and smarter advertising and, and more engaging experiences which mu with much less time spent in commercials. See, it's only on beta right now on Hulu, mm -hmm. uh, according to The Verge, uh, but you'll get it in full episodes of Glee, Office, Wilfred, Honored Family, or Lost so far. Uh, it's, they say it's pretty neat, some shortcomings, uh, but and only really major characters who couldn't pick out extras. Actually, if you look up an extra, like uh, I, you know, I have an old friend from high school that was like an extra in Spider-Man, and uh, he, actually, I think he actually had a, a, a title thing, and you still can barely find information on them, like IMDb. So if IMDb doesn't have them, then you know you can't really be expected to get much out of that, unless they cross-reference the Hulu face match with the Facebook face match, Ooh. and then you have that huge database, and you get all the extras that have Facebook. And then they could link you to that actor's profile. Exactly. Creepy. Exactly. It's stalking from TV, personified. There you go. Hope that hope you privatize that thing. So, oh, that's kind of cool. And, and uh, they're not the only ones. Google Plus, I think, uh, had something in the last week where uh, they're going to be putting fa face recognition in their own. But they, they've had they've talked about having face recognition for a long time, haven't they? Like, they what happens if you run that face recognition on uh, on uh, Google Maps, <laughs> Street Google View, Maps. the whole thing? Oh wow! Think about Wouldn't that. That'd be crazy. Is that high enough resolution though? Uh, I, I imagine for what they have available to them, maybe mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that'd be pretty interesting. So you cool. get the so wow, yeah. There, there's a there's a privacy issue. Um, you could cross reference Google Maps, Street View, with all of your Foursquare check ins and all of your Facebook check ins slash Koala check ins. And create this incredible database that could tell you where anybody has ever been ever since Google Maps launch. Nice. Nice. Chad. Welcome. Sleep tight. <laughs> uh, here's another one. That, it's been an interesting uh, controversy this week. Amazon is uh, was pushing, uh, I think over the weekend, a price check app with uh, con controversial online discounts, according to The Verge. Um they were going to pay you to buy from its store. Basically, if you go out shopping this weekend and you were uh, using the price check app to, you know, buy it cheaper online, uh, they, they'll they give you uh, a 5% discount up to $5 on each of three items uh, for a total of $15 off $30, $300 in purchases if you do that. Uh, and, of course, the stores are all up in arms. Uh, Why? Because Amazon's smart? Yeah, because <laughs> they didn't think of it first, apparently. Well, how are you? How do you, how do you get this discount? What is the premise here? Apparently, you just use the app, uh, it, it, and it, I think it was, it was for a period of a few days uh, over the shopping season. Um, Did you have to like scan a barcode through the app? Is that what yeah, was proving basically, you? Basically, if you went out and found an object, huh? Use the price check app. Uh, they're shown the Android by, but there is a price check app on the ios as well yeah um you know they'd recognize those coming from the app and they'd apply the discount now, the curious thing here is that there's two ways to spin this they could have said hey we really want you to use this cool app of ours so for this limited time if you use our app you get a discount or you could take the anti-small business approach and say hey go to your local favorite store that really needs your money scan a thing and walk out and buy through the app <laughs> Give them the finger, and we'll give you a discount. Well, I guess, yeah, you know, I can I can uh, sit there and bring up the price check app, grab a box of uh, mini DV tapes that I need for these cameras for projects, and say, you know, price check it, There's there it is, and buy it, get my discount. So I guess it's not necessarily, but I think for most people that are like, I want to go buy something that you would price check, you would be going to a store because you don't have it yet. Why else would you want to? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm kind of curious why they would spin it in a, in a, in a, in a, like, go to a store and find a thing way when they should just be trying to spin it in a really friendly way that makes everybody feel warm and fuzzy but gets people to use the price check in the app. Like, the, the end game of this is that when you use the price check, you are buying a thing from them, mm -hmm. which is good and it's smart. 
and you want more people to use your app so you get more impressions so you make more money. Um, but when you spin it in this other direction, it makes, you know, it gets a lot of people upset and they, it, you know, there's no such thing as bad press and all that, but, mm -hmm. huh. And, uh, you know, yeah, I was one, I was, uh, listening to, uh, another of my podcast today and, uh, not my podcast, but I listened to, uh, and, uh, they were talking about, uh, you know, price, price, uh, uh, price matching. Mm. And somebody would take a uh, another uh, app like this called Red Laser uh, that yeah. actually cross references it locally amongst other stores apparently, and uh, they what they were saying they, they like the two latest Harry Potter movies they were trying to get on DVD. It was cheaper at like say Walmart, and it was cheaper for part two at another store. So they pulled up the other one and got both of them at the cheaper rate. That's a really good idea. And since it's Red Laser, it's a more legit app. And But but my, my worry is going up to the wrong store manager, and they're like, what the hell are you trying to pull? You know? Yeah, I mean, it's something that um, I spent a good amount of time thinking about because I'm all about supporting local business and keeping, keeping as much of your money in the local economy. It does good things and all that. Um, but at the same time, for instance... Uh, so I'm working on light fixtures at work recently for a project, and I need to buy a very specific type of, um, of fluorescent bulb. And it's very possible that there's a local distributor that I could walk in and find that bulb. But my options are to go drive around, drive to like 15 places and figure it out, or spend the time to call these people, which takes way too much time. Most of them don't know their inventory very well, which is really no mm -hmm. fault of their own to not know it off the top of their head. Or <clears throat> I go to shopping.google.com and I do some poking around and in half an hour I have an answer. Now, the reason that I buy from that person online is not because I hate local business. The reason I buy from that person online is because it's easier and it's more efficient. So what we're really missing here is local businesses having a more, a more accurate and a better connected inventory system. Because there are companies like Google who are pushing you towards shopping local when the data is available. So if you search for something online and a, a local store has their inventory available on their website and it's <clears throat> and it's looked at by Google, then yeah, it'll show up. It's like, hey, this place down the road is probably a better result for you than this place that you buy from and wait for a week. So you can buy it through the website, or maybe you can walk in and pick it up. Mm -hmm. So the fault here is not that like it's not like big business versus little business. It's unfortunately that little business does not have the infrastructure to benefit the consumer as much as big business does. Yeah, for, I mean, for instance, I was having an ordeal where uh, I needed a last-minute Santa suit, uh, and uh, that's an interesting ordeal. <laughs> this is a, well, I guess this just really happened. Eh? This and is a true story. It's a true story. I'm like, where do I find a Santa suit this time of? Like, I wasn't even going to try a costume shop because it just would be ridiculous. Uh, what did I do? I, you know, what do you do first? You go to Amazon. Didn't find anything that was on Prime. You know, there was stuff on there for decent prices, but there was nothing on Prime. Uh, and, and, you know, I need to make sure I'm going to get it in a couple of days. Uh, so I go to, I start going on my phone to walmart.com, uh, 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 kmart.com, target.com, and finally found it on, on Kmart. Uh, and then I walk into the store and ask the person at the courtesy desk, uh, if, 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 if I can, you know, they can help me find the Santa suit because I can't find it in their store of whole crap load of Christmas stuff. And all she says is, well, if we have it, it's over in the garden shop. And that's it. Nice. Yeah, that was fantastic. Um, but right. yeah, especially for a big box store, that's kind of surprising. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, not surprising. Like, I understand right. that it happens. I've worked at a big box store, and I know why it happens. It's just surprising <laughs> that that's still a thing. It's like you're the courtesy desk. Uh, but even like looking up something like that, I'm getting I'm getting Sears. I'm getting Macy's. They're local, you know. Crate and Barrel. There you go. Uh, Toys R Us. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't see any kind of local retailers for anything like this. You know, you would think like when when like a Michaels or even or, or some other craft store have something like this around, you know, but I needed it now. And where did I go? I went to the big box stores, you know, so exactly what, how you're saying. So. I added a story to the notes. Oh, Whoa. Yeah. What's it's that? at the bottom in Rob's section. Section. But um, Google Sheet. apparently this company created a first person shooter. Using Google Street View oh, as the no. background. Oh no! Oh no! So they added the hand and the uh, what gun is it? 
the M4A1 assault rifle. Oh no! And basically, you're just allowed to walk oh, around. There it is. It says it says uh, the game encourages players to explore the beauty of the world, cities, towns, and villages through 360 degree street oh, level no. imagery. There is a Times Square. <laughs> it looks like it's uh, it's down because I just went to play it and uh, it loads up a white page that says Control Alt Delete. <laughs> Well, there's a picture right there of what it looks like. <laughs> that's uh, that's crazy. I know. I'm going to watch the game trailer on YouTube. So, uh, yeah, there's that. I wish I had more information, but that's really all you need. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, click here to get, play the game. Uh, it's at uh, popupcity.net <laughs> is where you, uh, you found it. So wow. I thought you guys would like to, uh, wow. to know that. Speaking of people getting shot. Um, wow. What? That's where you go. What? In games? In games? <laughs> games? I'm watching the trailer for this. This games? is amazing. Oh, yeah? Oh, the audio alone is worth it. Well, I'll, have to, I'll have to bring it up then. It's, uh, it's, got, it's got text in it. Um, oh, it's going to take some censoring on my part. Hold on here. <laughs> <laughs> so don't bring it up. Imagine a map so immense. So enormous. Gigantic. I'm guessing this is Tremendous where the, uh, and humongous. I'm guessing this is where the center is. So super colossal. Oh, this is t- oh, there we go. Really, really, really effing big. <laughs> well, See, my question is, uh, and it's down now, but um, so I won't sorry. find out for a while. But uh, I want to know if the background, like, reacts to... I doubt it. Uh, well, well, but, you know, it's probably like... You ever see that old <laughs> one where uh, you could put a gun in your browser and shoot up a website and just, like, puts the bullet holes, like, through the website? No, like, I it's got to be something like that. Yeah. You know, I, I, I can't imagine they put too much more into that. It'd be really impressive if they did. Oh, no, I'm T- not From saying, a technical standpoint. I'm not saying to put a whole lot into it. I was just curious to know if it would... Like show bullet holes or something like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So awesome. But anyways, as I was trying to say, sorry. Uh, the <laughs> Modern Warfare Three sales figures uh, edge out Avatar by reaching one billion dollars in record time. One billion dollars. Yeah. So I think you know this has been. They said that it was on pace to do this for a while, but this is the first time that a video game is as you know put out a a, a movie like that. So uh, the, you know with this, well, you it's know, definitely a big budget video game. When you I do mean, you, something correctly, mm-hmm. you're going to see results. I've seen no complaints about this game. There are none. Yeah. But then again, like a lot of people we play, I don't think I've played uh, that we play with haven't played the single player game yet. And I played through that. Every, every everyone we play with has played the single player game. Have they? Well, that first week they didn't even bother. Right now. No, because it's all about the multiplayer. Mm-hmm. But eventually it gets to the point where people turn on their Xboxes. They're like, oh, no one else is online. I'll mm-hmm. play single player. True. Because I mean, true. you don't want to play multiplayer with the 16 year olds that are on there dropping end bombs and calling each other homos and like i've actually listened to these people oh it's it's horrible oh babies like there was a baby one time like i was insulted by some of the stuff they've said yeah and i've said some pretty bad stuff yeah and i was offended so (coughs) what uh, rob nothing nothing okay (laughs) It's just coffee. That's fine. Um, so yeah, that's pretty incredible. Also, on the video game front, on live, I, I know I've been talking about it for a while, but uh, they—I don't think they've released the update just yet. I don't know, Chachi, if you want to check the uh, app store, see nope. if there's an update yet. Uh, but they are finally uh, putting out their update to play your video games, like say Arkham City, on your iPad or when actually Android devices, phones, whatever will run this uh, on live app. Uh, with the help of a fifty dollar wireless controller, but still, that's pretty <laughs> awesome. Buy this controller, and, and you gotta think you get this. You like you already have your iPad. You get this, and uh, you know what you if you have an Apple TV, you have you have a console, more or less. Right. You know, it's a lot of steps in there, but still, you know that's that's pretty decent if you already have this kind of stuff going on. So, I don't know what do you think of that shot. You gonna play on live on your phone over there? Nope. Nope. No. No. So, 
Um, I have an Xbox 360. I have no reason to use that service. That's true. That's true. Um, what else we got here? Uh, Twitter updated this past week. Rob just checked it out. Mm-hmm. What'd you think of it? <coughs> I feel like I need to do some reading because on a first glance, it doesn't look that bad. Um, it does seem like... Uh, well, you know how uh, Twitter updates are. Uh, Twitter updates. So Go ahead. In the, in the wake of this update, it seems like what they've done is they're kind of, they've definitely sidelined they push the M's. I, I'm trying to find them, actually. Um, where, wow. Oh, you are so fired. Mm-hmm. That's kind of annoying. All right, so it takes like three or four button clicks to get to direct messages. Um, a- and it's also a much more generic sort of looking thing, and it's pretty clear that they're trying to make they're trying to make their app work a lot more like their web interface. Mm-hmm. Um, and from the sound of things, it also, they changed some things to, uh, shoot some holes in the third party app. So if, if you have something like Tweetbot or, um, anything that isn't the Twitter, uh, application for, uh, iOS is, is, I, I'm so Android naive. I'm assuming there's a native Twitter client for Android that is the Twitter client. Yes. 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 I don't use it, but yes. Is it more or less the same thing as the iOS that you're aware of? Yeah. Okay. And I- um, another interesting thing is that um, what's his name? Uh, what's John, his name? John Gruber. Nope. Oh. Uh, Lauren Brichter. Um, if you remember back in the day, um, there was Tweety, and then Twitter bought or they hired Lauren Brichter and basically bought Tweety and turned Tweety into the Twitter application. And then, remember that? Yeah, I remember that. Uh, people were kind of, uh, were, were they kind of dismayed about that? Or those, Well, yeah, I mean, it's like... Everybody, it's loved, like, everybody loved Tweety. People were dismayed that it was no longer an individual thing that was bought by them, and they basically said, like, hey, you're doing well, let's buy you, but that's the nature of acquisitions. But the interesting thing is uh, Lauren Brichter left Twitter last month. Mm-hmm. And now, so, apparently, the app looks nothing like Tweety anymore. Yeah, yeah, and it doesn't really look like There's, his business anymore. It looks so like I guess the biggest complaint is that it is no longer a really, like, a tightly cultivated, good UI experience. It's a much more generic, um, hope this works for everybody kind of experience. Yeah, and this is, um, and this is uh, apparently, I, I received the new Twitter update uh, in my browser, and uh, they, they've, they've swapped things around. They move uh, things. Oh no! I have to redesign my profile. Yeah, yeah. What? Look, look. It's covering up all my stuff now. Oh, but wait. Look. Now it's revealed. Oh, there we go. Um, but yeah, it, it's. Uh, I don't know. It, it, it works for me. With trends. They're really pushing the trends. Uh, we got new connect and discover buttons up here. Oh, the actual interactions I'm having with people. Okay, that's interesting. Can you can you find your direct messages? Uh oh. Yeah. Uh oh. Where are my direct messages? I can't even see it, but I just direct knew messages. they had hit it somewhere. Yes, I'm they, trying to get mine to show the They new hit it and it's a pop up and uh There's only two button clicks. That's that's all my private messages. I probably shouldn't show that. Um, <laughs> this is my private messages. <laughs> hey Sword, do you have a Santa suit? Wonka, uh, Wonka. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I mean it, it, it's a. Uh, you know, and more integration apparently with a lot of the links and stuff. I, I think they no, no, that's that's loading outside. Um, yeah, what happened to? Oh, here's you, there's, there's more of the uh, media loading inside. Which oh look, I can buy something directly from Twitter from Amazon from Mr. Which is Andy. not necessarily a bad thing. No, that's not no, a horrible not thing. A little bit of expansion of that. Well, I, well, Chachi, weren't you one of the people that was using just the Twitter uh, uh, website for the longest time at I work? St- I still do. Yeah. That's so. what I load. It's easier. Do you have this new one yet? No. No? No. No, instead, I've been watching people complain for the past week and a half about new Twitter. Just like I don't know. they always do when new Twitter comes out. You know, I don't know if it's because I've been I've been working with Facebook for clients and getting really dismayed when, the, when I create an event two weeks from each other and I have to figure out how to do it again, uh, that this doesn't seem like such a big deal to me. <laughs> My is, favorite is that part... It? Is, is Facebook has just, like, 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 hardened me to changes so, so bad? Well, I mean, 
in this day and age with constant updates and everyone relying on something so, so trivial such as Twitter because I mean when it comes down to it it's such a trivial thing like it's not a necessity I mm-hmm. guess um, and I don't think it'll ever be a necessity don't argue with me it's, a, it's <laughs> not to some people no it's, it's not a necessity, necessity of their interactions no you wouldn't die if the, if you took away Twitter what if you're a social media expert and you wouldn't clients. die. <laughs> no. What I'm, you're seeing is the equivalent of Wonder Bread changing their recipe. Right. New Coke. You can always buy different bread. Mm-hmm. And you will not starve because Wonder Bread changed their recipe, but it's different and it's something that affects you. Right. In There's like very, it's an emotional way in the way that you interact with it. So when I refer to like how many button presses it takes for me to do things, that's a... That's a productivity thing. That's an ease of access thing. That's a usability thing. Mm -hmm. A lot of people aren't even going to notice that, but I notice that because I happen to be able to pick up the taste of cinnamon in this loaf of Wonder Bread. Look at this. (laughs) Look at this. But I mean, my favorite part of uh, Twitter updating each and every time, and at first I was guilty of this, I'll admit it, but it's the one person is like, oh no, Twitter updated. 20 people respond, oh, I hope I don't get it. Yeah, and just like one, instant rejection. It's yeah. the same, it's the, and then what I like to call one. the Windows XP syndrome. <laughs> and then, when people said, oh god, it's different, shut down the world. Yeah, and then mm-hmm. one by one, they all get it, they complain for three days, they yeah. use it, and then it's like it was never different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let mm-hmm. me know when you're done with your horse and buggy so we can all move along. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook Facebook has this problem every week it seems because they're always changing something right and uh, you know it, it just Twitter Twitter uh, maybe Twitter will have a hashtag uh, screw the new Twitter you know um, it, well, this is interesting though uh, have you checked out the discover tab at the top there uh, uh, Rob I was, I was playing with a little bit on video here. I uh, I don't have the new Twitter in oh the that's right that's right well well here it is for you to see Uh <laughs> Since we can do that now, uh, yeah, it, it looks. This looks like the what's hot that's going on in Google Plus or something that they calls. It says you have stories mm. now, and I guess these are. I want to know what that Mario picture is. Oh well, we'll check it out. You, you, it, it's a tweet there. There you go. Friend zone, <laughs> relationship. Oh, uh, I get it. Well, I mean, something else to understand about well, well, Twitter well, is that they are a business and they do have competition, and mm-hmm. Google Plus is certainly their competition. So making changes like creating the story thing is part of them going after the competition. Well, that's the problem. Something like this that people are used to and liked because it was so simple um, is not going to stay simple forever because there's always going to be an effort for them to grow and figure out like to monetize, get more people into it, Make people use it in new and interesting ways that they think will help, you know, what Twitter's bottom line in the long run, right? Yeah, Um, and if if an application never updates and never changes, then, like, yes, it'll always be comfortable, but comfortable is rarely advantageous, and comfortable rarely starts a revolution. Right. So Mm -hmm. for them to find out what people really don't want, don't like, or doesn't work, you really need to release it. You can only do so much user testing before you need to throw something into the fire and see what comes out. It appears to be this uh, discover, yeah, kind of like like I said, like the what's hot uh, going on on Google Plus. Uh, it, you know, the the one picture I brought up for you, Chachi. There, it says uh, uh, fi- down here, fifty plus retweets, fifty plus favorites. So this is stuff that's being like retweeted and favorited a bunch of times. Like on Plus, you're seeing stuff that's getting plus one and shared a lot. Right. So it is. Yeah, and that's interesting. So you're not just in your kind of fishbowl and what they're doing. You know, you're seeing what are the most what what like trending. What are most people talking about here on Twitter or sharing on Twitter? Uh, that's that's kind of interesting. It's kind of I, I'm not I'm not completely against that. Um, and to have your uh, interactions and mentions that under under its own heading instead of kind of they weren't really accessible before greatly, were they? No, not really. I mean, I could see using this a little bit more, you know, if I'm just using, you know, my personal account at least, you know. This doesn't help people with... Oh, have you, has anybody heard about the the branded Twitter pages they've started doing? They, uh, uh, this is something they're starting to roll out. Uh, I think Coca-Cola is one of them. Uh, j- just really a slight redesign from what I understand. Yeah, here it is. 
uh, loading up now. Uh, you see there's a little bit of a banner going on there. Like I say, more, you know, kind of identifying this as a business and letting them do a little bit more with it. Um, I, I don't know. This is uh, so th this is this is going to be the big thing for them trying to make money, because I mean, really, Twitter does Twitter make money at this point? They have to. They make money. How do they? How is it? They have business solutions. But, you know, I don't you know, maybe it's for these bigger guys. I don't you know pay to use Twitter for the businesses that I I do it for. So hmm. but uh, it was interesting changes. I don't hate them. I, honestly, I think they look nice. So uh, let us know what you think, guys. Uh, so, oh, I will let you know Josh, as soon as I get it. Josh is going to get slapped in the face with it uh, tomorrow when he goes to do a tweet. And That's fine. That. We're we're going to hear on it. Ironically, no, I, on Twitter, I don't care. So. I've accepted Twitter changing. Uh, I got a message. Ooh, from Twitter. They're not happy with me right now. <laughs> um. In another case, uh, well, you know, like us, we we love when the movie studios try to fix things, don't we, Rob? Yes, yes, we do. Uh, Ultraviolet, I think we've talked about a little bit here. Uh, I I haven't talked about it too much because I don't really understand and thought it would be another fly by my BS kind of thing that the studios are doing. I'm kind of right. Um, so if you buy a DVD now, you're probably seeing the commercials. Uh, they have this thing called Ultraviolet. It, it, it's supposed to uh, have your movie that you purchased on DVD or Blu-ray safely and conveniently in the cloud. Oh, I've seen that. We like where this is going already, right? No. Mm, apparently, uh, well, you get it. You, you, you register the code on that little card that comes in the DVD, just like you used to do when you used to do it with iTunes. Um, and, uh, if you have the Flickster app, you can watch it through that. Mm. Now, apparently, uh, <laughs> so, uh, let's see, where were we here? Um, three, three 3% of the comments relating to ultraviolet were positive. 17% were negative. The rest were neutral. This is among the worst reception the company has tracked. And a quick look at Amazon reviews for Harry Potter and Deathly Hollows Part 2 echo that sentiment with hundreds of one- and two-star reviews slamming Ultraviolet. Uh, the main thing is that uh, Ultraviolet is that well-known content providers like Amazon and Apple haven't adopted it. So the only option is to use Warner's Flickster site as a portal to access the movies, which mm -hmm. adds a little bit of complexity to it. Um, it doesn't mention here, but I think this has been so poorly received that they've actually been giving copies, not rental copies, but full copies in either the Amazon or iTunes store as a fix to irate customers. So is the deal here that you're supposed to, uh, I'm like read, just reading about it, is the, the deal that you buy a DVD and you get a code with it, right? Yeah. So you already have the DVD. Yes. Yeah. But you're you want to watch it on your device or whatever, so you pull it up in Flickster or whatever you have to. Yeah, uh, this, this sounds like a like really desperate grab to be cool like everybody else. Well, they've been doing this for a while. You ever get a DVD with digital copy, Rob? You know when the last time I bought a DVD was, Mike? <laughs> uh, Chachi, how about you? <laughs> you know the last time I bought a DVD. Uh, okay, uh, okay. Now I I still buy DVDs sometimes, like Iron it's Man literally two and like stuff. Two thousand seven, yeah, no. the last time I bought. You it. know, okay. So so I've been getting these DVDs for years. You know, big big movies that I want, like you know, usually comic book movies. But I was like looking through, and it's like you know, I have a bunch of them that have digital copy. I've never used this stuff, and I was curious. I'm curious, is this really as bad as they say it is? You open it up, you get a card, and this is the way they've been doing digital copies. You, you plug it in to, I think the options were uh, Windows Media <laughs> Store on the Windows Media Player or on iTunes. Now, I set it up on, I, I set up most of them through iTunes, of course, since I, I'm pretty Macintosh based. And uh, one of them, I think Iron Man 2, maybe Iron Man 1, I plugged in the code, and for whatever reason, it says that I already used it. Right. Because someone got your code. Somebody got my code, or actually, I think there was an error when I put it in, and now it thinks that I've already used the code. I think I entered the code in the wrong place on iTunes, to be honest. And now I'm locked out of it. Otherwise, you know, you put in the code and you have the download, and I'm sure I can only use it on, like, one device. Yeah, and now you don't even get that with regular DVDs. Mm -hmm. You have to buy the triple play combo pack. In order to get your digital copy? In order to get the digital copy. 
any bonus features, mm -hmm. like any of the, the commentary tracks behind the scenes, the blooper reels, you have to buy Blu-ray or higher yeah. to get any of that because they want to do away with DVD. Yeah, yeah, which is just, that's that's understandable. That's how that's how they, they migrate people, you know? So. so, I mean, I can, I can understand that. Uh, it, it stinks for me because I haven't adopted Blu-rays yet. I haven't seen a reason to adopt Blu-ray yet. I don't Why have a, would I? Wouldn't adopt I What's that, Rob? I wouldn't adopt Blu-rays if I were. Why? It's a little late to adopt something that's going to die in two years. Isn't it? Doesn't it feel like it? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like we were talking about last week, they're about to stop pressing CDs. And if that is true, they're certainly about to stop pressing DVDs. Mm -hmm. And. I wouldn't be surprised if Blu-rays went before DVDs. Did. So it's less of a these are the old formats. It's more of a we're almost done with formats. No, we're almost done with physical, physical media. Physical formats. Physical. Yeah. yeah. So it's the only caveat is the accessibility to far off places that don't have the accessibility to broadband. Mm -hmm. But the more like if we can ever solve that problem, that is nationwide broadband access, at least for the U.S. Because the rest of the world is doing pretty okay. I'm not too familiar with, like, you know, I'm, there are places in Russia where people live in shacks, but they live in shacks because they don't watch DVDs. Like, that, that's a hand-to-hand <laughs> -hand kind of thing. They don't have to worry about it. So you're looking at major cities have no problems. Or, you know, Denmark has incredible internet access. It's expensive, but it's, it's ubiquitous. The U.S. is one of the few places where you have people who use these technologies, but they only have access to dial up or like DSL connections. And that's not good enough for companies to completely flip the switch and stop making physical media. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Um, and in other news, my father who is also at the sticks finally has uh, out in the sticks, uh, finally has Netflix and he's loving it. And he's probably going to get rid of half of his direct TV plan. Right. Cause you don't so, need it. Cause, Cause you don't need it with the Netflix. I mean, he's got the discs. He's not again, like we're talking about, he's not going to get the streaming, but you know, that's now I'm looking at it as like, do I get him DVDs for Christmas? Because right, yeah, it why doesn't do make do sense that? anymore. That, that and the was, more people it doesn't make sense for, the less mm -hmm. likely it is that physical media will continue. That's the greatest thing. When I started doing Netflix, uh, you know, I would go to say Walmart, you know, or whatever, and go check out what's out on the DVDs. You know, and more and more uh, as I got Netflix, as I got like Hulu. Uh, even as I play these video games on my iPhone, as opposed to buying a lot of Xbox games, I don't check out. I don't spend it, spend that time while my wife is shopping uh, uh, in those sections anymore. Because I'm like, nah, I'll wait for Netflix. You, you kind of go and browse and see what I want to add to my queue. You know, more than anything these days. Um, and and you're seeing that with this. So I mean, but that's been my behavior. Oh so. wait, there's. Hmm? <laughs> Sorry. Okay, Josh. No, no. There, there's a YouTube video that I wanted to make sure you guys saw. Um, I don't know if it's show appropriate though, because of language. All right, we'll we'll hold that off then. Well, maybe I'll hold that for the after show. Yeah. Um, here's another one. Uh, have you been playing with Flipboard at all, Rob? I've been playing with Flipboard since uh, it came out, like a year ago. Was it? Two I years have ago? Uh, within the past month fully converted to Flipboard. And even more so since they started putting it on the iPhone. Um, Google Currents came out over the last week. Oh, yeah. I meant to look at that. Yeah. Uh, you're gonna, it's going to be really familiar, but not as nice. Uh, I think it's going to be your impression. Yeah, it uh, sounded like it was just a Flipboard clone, but without the design polish. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, re it really does seem like that. Uh, Chachi, I don't know if you want to. I do have it on the last page there on the iPad if you want to bring it up. Uh, after he's done looking at the thing he's looking at, uh, but it's they, they launched with a bunch of uh, content partners. I saw a lot of crossover. I don't think this is the right thing. Okay, if you Google, if you go Google Current, you get Google Current TV. That's not the right thing. Um, but yeah, it, it's pretty much like another flip bar. Now this is interesting because uh, I remember there are stories. Uh, it's uh, Currents with an Currents. S. My bad currents and it's cross-platform it's on ios and android of course uh so at least you have that flipboard is ipad and now iphone only uh so it's it's another kind of curator app but it's it is nice but i think more people are going to get it because more people know what google is i like google so yeah, it's um, possible i mean i'm really curious about i've always been kind of curious about because i haven't um i've never found an rss reader that i like enough Okay. I never really got into Google Reader because there are a lot of sites that I look at that are very 
design and, and like content heavy, like visual content heavy. Mm-hmm. So the the manner in which it's presented on that actual website can be more useful to me than what an RSS reader provides. So I do like the bookmark toolbar thing. Um, but I've always been looking for an RSS reader that presents things in at least a, a well-designed manner. Um, and there was, there used to be an RSS reader for, um, for OSX that was called Times that was like a pre-Flipboard Flipboard, made it look like a newspaper. It was very well laid out and organized. And then after that was Flipboard, and Flipboard is great. And so when I'm like, when I just have my iPad and I want to do what is essentially browsing my bookmarks, but in a slightly more like mobile way, I'll use Flipboard. So there is a market for this, for this like weird idea of like, I don't want just text. I want it to be really well organized, will, really well designed. And for it to like put all of my stuff in certain categories, instead of just having like the list in your, in your Google reader, you want to have it presented in, in sections like you're reading a magazine. And that's what these things do. Do you know if, um, I'm sure it does, but it probably only does it in, in an annoying way. If Google Currents integrates social media as much as Flipboard does? Uh, it does. The, well, one, you go to the, uh, the the page that I just had up there. Actually, it's a different thing. Um, but there are trending stories. Um, you know, of course, I think there's like Google Plus integration. Here's kind, yeah, of, here's, here's kind of a look. It doesn't, yeah, like I said, it doesn't look like it has as much polish. But it's doing the same kind of magazine format. Like here's a image of Slash Gear that they're showing on this site. Uh, where we're we at? I think we're on, uh, oh, this is Slash Gear. So they're looking at themselves. Uh, but still, it, it's a... Uh, yeah, because one of the useful things about Flipboard is that you can also plug in your Facebook and your Twitter, mm-hmm. and whenever you know when when you're looking at a story, it'll show you people who are talking about that story, or it will prevent, present your social media streams as news streams. As that, like, here's a link to a that's thing. That's the Check greatest out with thing. The, I love bringing up Flipboard, and and that's how I read Twitter when I want to sit back and see what's going on on Twitter the, yep. anymore. Like, because uh, I, I don't know if anybody's seen the uh, the have you seen the iPhone version of it. No. Like now we have this uh, cover stories feature. It wants to get on my Wi Fi and it gives you kind of like the best trending stuff uh, going on. Like, you know, uh, okay, there's nobody, anybody would know there. But uh, like, yeah, it's pulling up Merlin Man, Slide to Play, Venture Beat, Single Dad Laughing, and six others. And it'll pull from all the feeds I have. And then mm-hmm. I pull up a, a, a Twitter or a Facebook and everything is more of a magazine style. Like there's the guys, there's uh, one of the freak show guys. You know, uh, it, it's just more more readable in the long run um and, and just a, a great presentation than just a stack of text like like you see in hootsuite or TweetDeck. so uh, which i think the new twitter it feels like it's trying to get at that a little bit you know with their media integration so it is more than just a stack of text but uh you know we're in a day and age where they're trying to go away from when they were just an sms thing so but um i don't know it'll be interesting and plus you know uh, Google supposedly tried to buy Flipboard and they denied uh, being bought. So uh, that's what happens. They developed their own. Hmm. But um, so Shachi has abandoned us. Uh, and I think that's all I have here. Is there anything you wanted to bring up, Rob, before we go? Uh, no, slow news week. I think, uh, I think we polished, polished I off think whatever we, we could squeezed off. all we could out of what's going on this week. Uh, but there is one more show we're going to be doing, Rob, this yeah. Friday. Uh, if you want to join us live, and of course, the rest of you, you'll get it up in the feed about the same time you usually do next week. But we are doing our uh, very first-ish. Uh, I-, I think we did something to an effect of a holiday episode last year, but nothing as grand as what we're trying to do this week. Uh, so fr- join us Friday, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time here at live.sorgatronmedia.com. We'll be recording our Christmas episode, uh, and we're going to be bringing in as many people as we can here, uh, talking about kind of a year in review, talk about our predictions for the next year. We'll have to dig up, because I know we did predictions last year, right? Uh, see what came true out of that. Uh, and, uh, and, and wrap it up, and of course you guys are going to get a best of episode in between the holidays, and we will be back on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Time uh, as of uh, the new year. So cool. uh, stay tuned for all that. Rob, what you got going on? You're at robjdlc.com for all the things you do, including yep. calling shens on everything. Uh, yeah, Drinking. R-O-B-J-D-L-C on the Twitters, where I've taken to conversing less and making funny jokes more. Um, mostly complaining. 
Uh, if you use Drupal, I feel sorry for you. It's about that. Uh, what do I have going on? I don't know. Um, I uh, it's wine down time. It's the holiday season. Yeah, it's it's weird. I don't. I'm kind of because I've been like really jumping around, traveling a lot, and I'm really having trouble grasping the idea that I'm not really going anywhere in the near future. Like, I think my next trip is in uh, maybe the end of January. If not that, then it's like March. It's kind of weird. Um, but I don't know. I don't really have anything big going on. Sorry. <laughs> Chachi, you are at ChachiSays.net. That is correct. You sire. are an investigative journalist I guess. as of this past week. I am. I'm completely taking credit for that, by the way. <laughs> okay. uh, so if you haven't watched it, my latest episode of Chachi Says the Vidcast, I, I took my camera and I went down to Occupy Pittsburgh and I found out that there was only six people there. There's more than six people at Occupy, let's be fair. No, at the time I went down there, there yes, was a total... Have things to do. I, and I only saw six people on the uh, on, on the newscast. But um, there was only six people there. Um, I took a peek inside of a few open tents, and there was no one in there. So it's a bu- it, at the time, it was a bunch of unoccupied <laughs> tents taking up space for so no it's, reason. It's unoccupied Pittsburgh? Yes. Um... And, when did you go? Uh, last Wednesday. Last Wednesday. And uh, Matt Car- Carlins, a fan of the Mayhem Show, mm-hmm. who works for KDKA, saw my story, and he took it to his producers. And immediately after that, uh, Mellon issued a or issued an eviction notice, mm-hmm. telling these people that they got to go. By uh, Sunday at noon, yeah. Yeah, and of course that prompted people to actually show up and do stuff. Now that people are saying they can't be there, so to be, to be perfectly fair, as someone who is uh, informed and occupied, there's usually a lot more than that. There's a large number of people in the occupy camp, and the eviction was never actually it never actually happened. If you care, the, the eviction <laughs> Just, did happen. No, they weren't evicted. Well, they weren't evicted. No, they, just was... because people don't accept the paperwork saying that they weren't evicted doesn't mean they weren't <laughs> evicted. No, they were served paperwork saying they were going to be evicted, and they were never evicted. Occupy returned by asking Mellon to evict themselves from Pittsburgh. <laughs> so, Just that. because you refuse to accept <laughs> hey, the wait, fact... This is for another show. No, 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 no. Just because you refuse to accept the fact that someone's telling you to get off their land mm-hmm. doesn't mean you haven't been evicted. And it, well, the notice was that by this date you will be removed, and they were never removed. That's never. because they have to go through a legal process. Yeah, I believe. I believe the the. Uh, no, so at no, this no, point, I, it's still in the courts. I, it, I, the The judge has to approve this, which he will. And, 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 and the notice was up, and if they weren't removed, they were going to go to court on Monday. Yeah. I don't know if they actually went to court. They did. So they did go to court. Yeah, they just haven't a, gotten. A, yeah, I know there was a city council thing, but that's for another show. Uh, go check yeah, out Steel City the, Resistance. The, the or city, something. the city council thing, by the way, happened in November. Mm-hmm. So that was a little behind the time. Oh really? Yes, because that th- that that whole approval thing happened on November eighteenth. That's funny because people were talking on Twitter as if that happened Monday. Yeah, if you yeah, go, that was that was November. If was you November go and 14th. read the details of the report, mm-hmm. it they it said, "Oh, these people have our backing on November eighteenth," mm-hmm. which means the city council was behind it as long as Mellon says it's okay. Yeah. So yeah. who knows what they're going to do now? Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, anyways, Chachi they says... They need to get out of my park. <laughs> Chachi says wow. .net, and we'll see uh, who he's uh, investigating and, uh, and chachikapying this week. Um, and hey, I'm over at Sorgatron.com, MikeSorg.com, all the stuff going on there. Uh, we're gonna have, we have an extra episode of Unsung this week that you can check out, and uh, we'll have a special holiday episode of that up next week as well, and everything else going on, SorgatronMedia.com. Uh, including Seclair Chatterbox, uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show, and all, all that kinds of stuff. Hey, guys, check us out. We are all over the Internet. We want to hear from you on any comments. We're, of course, on the Twitters at, at AwesomeCast. We are on uh, Google+, and there's been some great discussions over there, long discussions, and uh, over on Facebook as well. So go like us, follow us, plus us, 
minus us, whatever the kids do these days. Uh, thank you for our chat room. You guys have been going all night um, and, uh, and and keeping us entertained here. Uh, and, uh, and and we, we have a few videos to watch afterwards, thanks to that. Uh, so thank you to the awesome chat room. Thank you uh, uh, to, to, to my cohorts. And you have been an awesome audience. Have an awesome week. drinking yeah dear dear god no that's uh <laughs> well all i saw Rob, was you're all good to go we have a smattering of stories to kind of make things up as we go along smattering nebraska's Ooh, gone. And a side wipe yeah where did that come from nebraska's the... gone is there a uh hmm. can we there start we with that i think we should start with that, that, that I'm gonna, be... the feed that uh hmm. i'm gonna guess that whatever feed is piping the video into however it's getting to me is loose or bad or is it fuzzy it might be next to a power cable is it is it fuzzy it's not fuzzy but i'm getting lines every once in a while i'm seeing this and it's usually when you talk apparently yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's when anyone talks well, wow. it's, it's basically it's only that is uh, that is not that is a, a non-vital feed that is a <laughs> that is an fyi feed Okay. I bet I, I bet I can manipulate the size of the waves. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> the thing is, nobody else can see this except you. <laughs> nobody else. This is so awesome. Do it again. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> That's a good one. All right, don't do that during the show. <laughs> He's gonna talk during the show. No, I might make that noise during. Like, the hey, show. how's it going? Oh yeah, generally, generally, yeah. yeah, you should not make that during the show. <laughs> oh. <laughs>